Well, hello again everyone. You join me while I'm getting the van ready to do another little minor service before we head off on our next trip. Well, I'm going to change the oil and this time when I do it, I am going to use an engine flush. Now, I know opinions differ on the wisdom of using engine flush, especially on older engines. People will say that uh, it can cause leaks and seals and things to fail. But I think if your engine is in good condition, you're fairly confident with it, it can't really be a bad thing to remove the sludge. If the sludge is the only thing that's keeping your seals together and preventing your engine leaking, then there's probably uh, worse things going on. So I think it's probably on balance a reasonably good thing to do. So now it's just a matter of running the engine at idle with that flush in for 15 minutes or so, get it nice and warm and then drain the oil. Which is just the right amount of time to pop inside and make yourself a nice cup of tea. And since we'll be working on the engine, we'll disconnect the earth lead from the battery. Then it's out with the old oil and swap the old filter for a nice new one, remembering to fill it with new oil before we put it back on. Now I bought a new sump plug, but because of the way it's got this square drive socket in it, it would be difficult to get a tool in there to tighten it up because the exhaust runs straight past the sump plug. So I'm just going to use the copper washer off the new one to replace the washer on the old one and put the old sump plug back in because it's got a much nicer hex head on it. Now after a lot of discussion on the merits of synthetic over mineral oil, I have decided to go back to a semi-synthetic oil and this is 10W40. Uh, I don't think you want to go any thinner than that, but 10W40 should be fine, I think. And you want to buy a service pack like this with 6 litres in, because uh, the engine does seem to take just slightly over the 5 litres. Well, look what I've found. This pipe here is the drain from the little air, fresh air intake box here. And there's lots of talk about this drain going down and draining into your, the slot at the back of your gearbox where your, your clutch goes and stuff and uh, water sort of damaging all that. So I thought I'd move it and have a look and see where it goes because the end of it if you look, looks a bit sort of pinched off. So anyway, look what happens when you disturb it slightly. Yeah, that's not good, is it? So it seems like this pipe, for two years or so, when we've owned the van, and multiple workings on the engine. It's just been wedged on the top there, stopping that coming out. Anyway, what I'm going to do is, I can't leave it like this, can I? I'm going to put this bit of flexible pipe on there, drain that off, and then we might have to take that out, fill the hole in the bleed screw, because I suspect that's the same problem that we had on the water pump a while ago. I'll put a link to that video up there somewhere. Anyway, let's get this uh, pipe on and we'll drain this off. Mm -hmm. 
So that's coolant, isn't it? And I think that's the heater valve or where the heater pipe goes out to the heater matrix in the van, I believe. So uh, I, I'm amazed at that, really. Unless that's literally just developed that leak, which seems unlikely, because it did start as soon as I moved this pipe, which has been folded over. Weird. I'm at a loss to explain that. But anyway, we'll, we'll drain it off because we can't have that really. Well, I stopped spurting out. So anyway, I'll give it a good old uh, spray with the... Oh, or I would if there was any still left in the tin. Spray with the old plus gas. So I can get that out and... Uh, oh dear, there's nothing in this tin. Never mind, I've got another tin in the garage. Right, we'll let that soak in while we do something else for a bit. Now, of course, you always have to dispose of your old oil responsibly. So, as usual, we'll collect it for taking up the recycling centre when we get a moment. Let the uh, last dregs drain out into there. Gonna have to uh, go up there soon, get rid of this. Whew, uh, stopped for another tea as well. Gotta keep the uh, lubrication up. Hmm. Right, well, I've decided I'm not gonna replace the air filter. I haven't ordered a new air filter. I'm just gonna take that out and clean it. Um, and whilst I do that, I'm gonna give this a little bit more of a soak in the old plus gas. Definitely don't want to have any problems getting that out. Yeah, this actually looks so fresh. I don't think I'm even gonna bother moving the air box to uh, get it out and blow it off. There's nothing on there at all really, which is not surprising because we haven't really done many miles at all since I last replaced it. So worth having a bit of a look, but I think that'll definitely wait until next time. Right, well, that's had a good soak. Let's give it a bit more for luck. And uh, see if we can undo it. That's uh, eight mil. Oh, that's, uh... oh, that's okay, that's moving. Moving that easily, but it's moving, as always. Slow and steady is the key here. I suspect what's happened is that this has been over tightened or something in the past and rather like the one we had on the water pump, the bottom of it has been uh, ruined. Well, that's a wire for, look, that's just been cut. Looks like speaker wire perhaps. Why a speaker wire would be under the bonnet, I don't know. Electrics on here are a little bit of a law to themselves. But yeah, we could probably uh, do with some new bleed screws at some point. But for the moment, I'll just try and block that hole with some chemical metal when I get it out. Obviously that means it will be harder than usual to bleed from this point, not impossible. You can just undo this till the water comes out the threads, which uh, is just messy, really. I'm gonna take this out of my finger now. Yeah, 
Yeah, so again, I can't really see any damage to this. But it's obviously not seating properly on the bottom, I guess. I don't really know. Anyone comment as to why these would suddenly spontaneously leak? It's all very weird. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and block that up with some chemical metal. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is just wash it with some uh, some tool cleaner. Just to get any uh, oily residue off that might not uh, sit well with that chemical metal. Now I'm going to make sure it's uh, absolutely dry with the hot air gun. That hot air gun does make it quite hot. Now, obviously this is an out and out bodge and uh, not really a recommended thing. This is just to get us all back on the road and to keep us on the road until I get my act together and get some more lead screws. I just don't know why these leak when they're done up. It seems weird that two of them have done it. Right, I'll hold this gently in the vise, obviously not on the threads, on the nut bit. This stuff is quite easy to use. You just cut a slice off and squidge it up until it looks the same colour. There's a sort of middle bit and an outer bit to it. And then you just use it as a putty, dob it into whatever you're trying to uh, repair. Probably best wear gloves. Bloody good stuff anyway, yeah. Evo stick metal epoxy putty. So you don't need very much of it. Yeah, I'm really at a loss to explain what's going on here. But uh, providing that we can get the coolant system refilled and uh, no airlocks in it without having to use this bleed screw, we'll be uh, good to go. I'm going to just top up with water anyway, because I do want to uh, flush and replace the coolant probably before winter. I'm saying this, I might not get around to <laughs> I say all these things and then they never quite happen. But uh, certainly before winter, we'll make sure we have the right antifreeze strength in there we obviously dumped a fair amount. All right, does that look uniform to you? Don't know really. It's uh, more of a squeeze. All, right, all we're gonna do is get a little sausage of it. Make sure it's uh, squidged in there. I guess if you really wanted to at a future date, you could drill this out again. Should it turn out that I'm wrong and there's nothing actually wrong with these bleed screws. There is obviously something wrong with these bleed screws. If they're tightened up and water squirts out the top of them, that's not right, is it? Right, how long do we need to leave that to harden up? Hardens in 10 minutes and fully cured in an hour. Yeah, so by half past six, we'll be able to uh, sort that out. So probably not a bad time to go in and have me tea. Hello boss, when did you jump up there? Ah, keeping me company, eh? Right, it's an hour or so later and that's hardened up nicely. Right, let's get that back in that housing. Right, I've set the heater controls to hot in the van. I'm going to open up this little drain tap. 
and we'll uh, see if we can top the water back up again. Right, I'll just start her up, run her a bit, and then uh, we'll check the level again. See if she gets hot. The old hose a bit the squeeze. It's going to be easier to restart her if I reconnect the battery. Let's recheck that oil level now she's on the flat and it's pumped round a bit. Yeah, that's gone down slightly, but I'd say that's that's about right. Now I'm just gonna run her again. I want to get her up to temperature and see her stable at temperature. Really, I'll probably take her for a test run tomorrow just to make double sure as well. We've got no more leaks from that lead screw anyway. I'm going to leave her running while I pack away just so she gets up to temperature. Right, well, I reckon we've done all we can today, Mr. Ginge. Shall we go in for the evening? Well, that's all for now. If you enjoyed it, press like. Subscribe if you want to see some more. And ring the bell to be notified when we upload something new.